Okay, I see. So, so we been uh, you know uh, meet uh, over numerous uh, occasions, uh, like study sections, you know, ADA conference. So, uh, so it's a uh, it's always the place I I'd love to come down and finally made the trip. Uh, it's truly a blessing, and my my research is now to focus on the uh magnetic nutrient sensing and uh, uh, their, uh, their uh, metabolic homeostasis are controlled by the tissue tissue uh, communication and my okay is this better uh, so why we want to do our study uh, I think that now that like, uh, they uh, in modern society, or human uh, evolution, whether uh, with a lifestyle change that we don't have in the life, like our ancestor uh, is hunting for the food, and uh, we really don't have to uh, worry about the food availability, and uh, there's a lack of exercise, that would uh, lead to the many human diseases. So uh, we are interested in what where the human beings are hiding for, are we hitting the dead end? Uh, why we say that, uh, because their overnutrition and uh, uh, standard lifestyle uh, uh, underline many diseases, which is becoming prevalent uh, nowadays in the last uh, century, uh, like uh, obesity, diabetes, heart disease, aging, uh, cancer, neurodegeneration. Uh, so we ask the question uh, is uh, uh, whether uh, this uh, Although this uh, historically, so many of those diseases have been studied uh, in their own discipline, we ask the question whether uh, those diseases share any common molecular endocrine and the molecular mechanism. Uh, in that sense, whether this uh, drug has been used or developed to treat one disease can be used for treatment of other diseases. So that uh, uh, our fantasy uh, to try to have unified theory of uh, human diseases response to the lifestyle changes in modern society. Uh, so we pretty focused on the, the, the nutrient sensing mechanism in the cell. Uh, uh, so it's a, uh, it's a NSD glucosamine modification of intracellular proteins. So that's what we think is underlying uh, the many human diseases response to overnutrition and probably the central lifestyle. Uh, so this modification is glycosylation is quite a unique glycosylation form. Probably you, you don't learn much from textbook. Uh, uh, this is uh, not like a uh, attachment carbohydrate chain. This is really ant monosaccharide, ant glucose monosaccharide, uh, to take the serum free residue of an intracellular protein. It's not a cell surface protein. It's a uh, uh, modified nuclear cytosolic and the mitochondrial proteins. And so this modification is a really not static, it's highly dynamic. Uh, so it's an attachment of this uh, uh, sugar molecule to serum serenal residue was mediated by organic transferase. And the cleavage, this mod uh, modification mediated by organic uh, OGA. So, uh, so you, to, to allow this allocation uh, occur, you need uh, not only substrate, you need uh, also the uh, UDP GUNAC. So where the UDP GUNAC from, uh, so to produce the UDP GUNAC, you really need to uh, flux uh, for different uh, uh, metabolic uh, influx, uh, like a glucose contributes to the carbon group. Uh, you need to glutamine contributes to the uh, nitrogen group. You need acetyl-CoA contributes to this acetyl group and the UDP. So that place the UDP GUNAC, a highly dynamic intracellular metabolized response or integrated nutrient flux. And so that's the uh, uh, part of the reason why people think that this is over modification as a nutrient sensor. However, now concept uh, uh, is evolving. This UDP max itself not uh, sufficient to as a nutrient sensing mechanism because the uh, OGT and OG level can be regulated in many different ways. Uh, uh, but uh, I'm going to tell you, like, to share with you a couple of story uh, to appreciate the, uh, what we know how this protein modification. Uh, uh, affect the classic nutrient sensing pathway and how this modification uh, affect uh, uh, their 
uh, tissue tissue communication. Uh, also, our actual goal of our research, uh, as we said, not only is to understand there is uh, how uh, this modification uh, respond to UV uh regular signaling protein sensitivity regulation in the histone and metabolic enzyme. Uh, we also interested in how this modification cross talk with the other protein modification. As we know, phosphorylation respond to not only the growth factor hormones and the cellular ATP and T level, and the solution, protein solution is very abundant in the cell, respond to availability of uh, cytochrome A and DH level. Uh, so we think that a combination of uh, the protein protein modification uh, 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 encode a large amount of value information, which has been uh, which has not been uh, thoroughly studied. So we are interested in this uh, critical layer that of uh, the protein modification crosstalk to mediate nutrient hormone sensing, uh, regular cell signaling, and regulate the, the metabolic homeostasis. And so actually, I started working on the modification when I was graduate student uh, uh, with Jeff Carlo at UAB. Uh, I really fall in love at first sight. Uh, at that time, uh, we, uh, we asked the question, what the function of the modification in nucleus? Uh, so what do we, uh, accidentally, we identified this OGT actually in have with a uh, uh, HDAC complex, sensory HDAC complex, uh, which uh, uh, in, in that model is a, uh, uh, when like uh, this uh, uh, OG, nuclear receptor bring the like, sensory uh, HDAC OGT to the Compton, which leads to a, a, a steel cell leading to change the Compton structure, the OGT uh, targeted to iron polymer 2 and uh, uh, transfer factors as FT1 to lead to uh, repression of this uh, transcription complex, or repression of transcription initiation. So that's what the uh, uh, one way this modification cross talk with the histone acetylation, uh, histone deacetylation to mediate the gene silencing. Uh, so that's what the, uh, that's back to many years ago, that's what the, the model we propose. Uh, uh, we think this, this model is still valid. And not only that, and currently, this OGT has been known to associate not only the sensory HDAC complex can uh, interact with many different genetic regulators, like uh, this uh, DNA demethylase type test, HDAC, HDAC1 test, um, uh, and also it has uh, this uh, BAP1 deaconate that deaconate histone. And also, the OGT has a polygon complex uh, that uh, uh, this polygon content is, uh, is a genetic repressor by uh, methylated uh, histone as a K3, K3, K77. And also, histone itself can be glycosylated, which we don't know the function at all. So that's what the high OGT regulated epigenetic program is start becoming like a, a up, up and coming area uh, in the epigenetic research. Uh, but I'm not going to talk about the, uh, anything on this uh, area. So we, uh, my lab really focused on the metabolic regulation uh, so I'm going to share the story primarily that uh, how the modification regulates the metabolic physiology in liver, in, uh, in edible tissue, and the story in the, uh, in the nutrient sensing neuron. Uh, uh, so then when I was a uh, you know, uh, postdoc fellow uh, with uh, Ron Evans, uh, one part that actually I'm the only one working on this modification, so I'm still working on this modification. Uh, is uh, uh, we asked question how this modification affects insulin signaling. Uh, what we show, what we found was uh, uh, this modification is actually the, uh, uh, so the OGT, the intracellular, uh, part, modified intracellular protein, however, it's come uh, migrated to the, uh, to the plus membrane, respond to activation of, upon insulin activation of PF3 kinase pathway and then this process by the PF3 kinase inhibitor. So, so, uh, so, so why the ODT can respond to insulin signaling and can migrate to plasma membrane? What role do they play on plasma membrane? Uh, so uh, it turns out this was uh, the OI really, modification really play a role in the insulin signaling transduction. Uh, if you look at the upon insulin stimulation, this glycolation of the insulin receptor proteins was uh, uh, this really one critical feature is the glycogen is highly dynamic and on and off quickly. The other critical feature is the this uh, modification occur after phosphorylation occur after RF and peripheral phosphorylation. This is what uh, uh, the peripheral phosphorylation I have is uh, is uh, 
trigger its uh, initiation within a certain time bracket. So that was the uh, uh, um, algorithm that has delayed onset and is a, a trend in dynamic modification. So what this means, so what we think that the OGT doesn't really, this modification doesn't really affect the initiation within the time bracket. However, but after this signaling process has been accomplished, this glycosylation, uh, this OGT on the plant membrane by glycosylate into the cell circuit and, uh, and, and, and the AKT to promote the uh, uh, glycosylate and the termination of the pathway. So that in the, uh, in the physiological setting that perfectly makes sense because there, uh, after breakfast, you have insulin signal activation. How between breakfast and, and lunch, you really need this pathway to be uh, terminated. So the, a lot of the reactivation of the pathway upon the next meal. So what we think that the modification is really critical to reach that within the pathway to the and level after meal. Uh, so that was uh, uh, the hypothesis idea. Uh, however, this, this pathway uh, uh, can be uh, compromised uh, when, uh, you know, in the current uh, the over nutrition uh, uh, environment, like a uh, high group of high fatty acid, uh, over nutrition really leads to hyperactivation of this uh, 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 the nutrient flux pathway, hyper, uh, hyperdextrin OGT. So that's all, that's, that's only a little termination within the pathway. It's actually the hyperglycosylation leads to uh, prevent uh, activation within the pathway. So that's a part of the reason we think the modification is critical, the link of uh, nutrient access and insulin resistance. Uh, so, uh, so I should mention that what the OGT role here is really highly dynamic. Dynamic. It's uh, this uh, the uh, the this process occur in the 30 minutes, one hour. This glycosylation promotes insulin termination by glycosylation. This is insulin signaling components that occur really quickly. So I'm going to uh, tell another story. Is over prolonged fasting. OGT actually can move to the uh, set of uh, the nucleus to regulate uh, uh, glucose metabolism uh, uh, through the different mechanism. And that's what the gluconeogenesis. So uh, as a well established gluconeogenesis, the liver is going to the starvation, fasting starvation to, per, to lead to glucose production from the liver to maintain the blood glucose level. So gluconeogenesis is really critically controlled by the, the fasting signal and the satiety uh, signal, the fasting of glucagon. Because glucagon is a pure fasting, glucagon signal activation of uh, section 68 has been known uh, to promote the phosphorylation of uh, crab CR2 base or uh, uh, transmitter complex. That is due to mass expression of glucogenic gene like a CKK and uh, uh, glucose phosphatase. And, uh, uh, and this glucogenic, uh, glucogenic pathway was uh, induced the crab upon insulin signaling uh, because uh, if you have a glucose from the middle, you really don't need a glucose production from the liver. So this pathway is the crab. So, so one major problem with diabetes is like a, if they have insulin resistance, you really cannot suppress the insulin glucose genesis. Even if you have a meal, that leads to a hyperglycemia. Uh, so if you know insulin can suppress glucose genesis through AKT population of uh, a plus O PC1 pathway, that leads to suppressing the pathway. And uh, so, so I'm going to share the story is like a, uh, how OGT regulates glucose genesis by targeting this uh, uh, P P1 plus O uh, transmission complex. Uh, so the other, so we still don't know. You know, glucose itself can suppress glucose genesis because you have high glucose blood glucose level. You really don't need more blood glucose, so that glucose itself can suppress glucose genesis. So we still don't know the why, but uh, I'm going to share the story. OGT actually is still the missing link here. Uh, uh, and we uh, she actually started the story when I uh, fished out uh, the protein, uh, the, by the protein arms uh, approach, we found that this uh, uh, HS1, HOSA plus one is a major binding protein. Uh, 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 it's uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the cell. And uh, so we also identified this HS1 uh, not only bind to OGT, as well can be uh, glycosylated. And at that time, there was a, the other story, the cover story coming out, say oh, this uh, OGT can uh, uh, inherit this HF1 and immediately uh, this uh, is post post one factor cleavage and maturation. Uh, so that uh, affect the cell cycle. So uh, anyway, so then we asked this, uh, the question, actually we kind of partially scoop 
but still ask the question, what, uh, what's the role of OGT as a fine in the transcription regulation, uh, in the in, in metabolic regulation? So uh, there is a limited evidence to show that by it's too hybrid, it's a fine combined with PGC1. So we ask the question whether OGT as a fine contact can regulate phospho uh, uh, PGC1 uh, uh, transcription, uh, BD the transcription, uh, regular code genesis. And so there was a, so we did identify this uh, PGC1 is a target of, uh, of OGT. Uh, and uh, so this increased uh, the whole infection OGT, not only increased the glycosylation level of PGC1, but uh, increased the stability of PGC1. And uh, this uh, and uh, this uh, was a uh, uh, and uh, this uh, function OGT is similar to PGC1 is uh, is uh, mediated by HF1. If you mutate this uh, uh, this uh, this motif, it's a binding motif on PGC1. OGT really cannot uh, glycosylate it effectively and stabilize PGC1. So that was uh, actually one of the uh, the model to uh, uh, to imply this uh, glycosylation. Uh, so how the one enzyme OGT can uh, specifically regulate many different intracellular protein. You need a binding partner play a different uh, to bring the OGT to specific substrate. In this case, is PGC1, and then we further identify this uh, stabilization of PGC1 by OGT is through the recruitment of uh, this BAT1 is the deoxygenase. That's a from the deoxygenation, uh, and then that was a. Uh, uh, the, uh, that would lead to their uh, stabilization of PGC1. As you know, the PGC1 is very, really, uh, 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 it's an intrinsically disordered protein with a highly, very, very short half life. So, so we identified the, the one of the mechanisms that control the, the production and the degradation of PGC1 uh, by this, uh, uh, by this uh, uh, super complex. So, Okay, sorry. All right. Okay. Uh, I hope this is uh, getting better. Okay. Okay, uh, so so in, in that uh, so we uh, identified this new signaling mechanism by which this uh, uh, this uh, gigantic uh, protein complex uh, can uh, promote glucogenesis uh, through this uh, uh, OGT HF1 uh, the uh, 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 mediated uh, stabilization of PGC1. And uh, uh, as a result, this was uh, that was uh, uh, the one example that uh, upon the fasting, long-term effect of OGT is a translocated uh, migrate to the nuclear, uh, form like the super transcription complex to promote gluconeogenesis. So that was uh, tell you that this uh, organized signaling pathway is really versatile. It's not only respond to uh, uh, insulin pathway, it also respond to the fasting signal uh, to to regulate this uh, glucohemostasis response to feeding fasting cycle. Uh, so, so I'm going to uh, uh, tell you that uh, the uh, majority of probably my talk is a new story. Uh, is uh, this uh, how did it regulate the uh, liver autophagy, uh, which, as we know, this was uh, the Nobel Prize to go to autophagy field last year. Uh, the, the two years ago, and uh, if you look at the, look back at the, the history, the first autopsy picture which uh, was taken in 1962, uh, which the uh, Ashford and Father they gave the injecting glucagon into the rat liver into a rat. You actually and the uh, uh, this EM picture, uh, you can see this was a mitochondria was surrounded by a double membrane. And become degraded. So later on, they call this was a uh, uh, call, uh, 
out of background. And so, so that's still the one major question even now is uh, how glucagon trigger autophagy in the liver. So the, what a signaling mechanism glucagon trigger autophagy. And so we, uh, to try to uh, understand the question, uh, so that was, uh, uh, as we know, like uh, why autophagy matter to liver physiology. Uh, I should say like uh, liver is the most unselfish organ in our body, which uh, is the sacrifice itself upon uh, nutrient starvation uh, to, uh, there's a uh, undergo autophagy to produce the building block, uh, like a fatty acid, glycerol, and acid to use the glucose, uh, glucose production uh, and uh, uh, ketogenesis. That's a provide a fuel to be used uh, for other organ uh, during the uh, uh, starvation. And we don't like, uh, with, uh, again, the, glucagon the insulin pathway can suppress autophagy uh, when the nutrient in the nutrient in, uh, enriched environment uh, through uh, 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 activation and propulsive and suppress autophagy. Uh, and what I mentioned, like uh, the glucagon, how glucagon induce autophagy, still we have no idea about that. So that's uh, the, the other story which uh, I'm going to uh, talk about today. And so it turns out this over modification is critical to autophagy induction. Uh, uh, you can see here with uh, uh, this is uh, the, uh, the TMG, the inhibitor of ogonitransferase, uh, ogonitase that inhibit beta oxidation. That the TMG treatment uh, can increase the cellular ogonic level and the uh, uh, result that the increase the formation of uh, 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 LC, uh, LC3-2. That's tell you the, uh, that the elevated modification suddenly <coughs> induce autophagy uh, in the liver, in the primary hepatocyte. That's what we also look at uh, this, uh, the label, the, uh, 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 the fluorescent uh, uh, protein labeled the LC3 halo cell. The, that's uh, uh, show that the increase of punctal formation and it uh, also suggests what the uh, in elevated organic signaling increase autophagy. Uh, and, and then we ask the question whether this OGT is required immediate glucagon induced autophagy. And uh, so, so, we, uh, so we can delete OGT in the liver uh, uh, by, uh, uh, I don't know, create immediate uh, injection of OGT fast mice. Uh, so if you delete OGT in the liver, you can see the glucagon, uh, glucagon itself can uh, increase the autophagy plus by uh, increase the LC3 uh, two formation, increase the autophagy plus. And then uh, if you delete OGT, you actually reduce the autophagy plus. That's tell you, uh, and also you can show that upon the, we give the glucagon shot in the uh, living animal, uh, you can see this was a, uh, uh, if you delete OGT, you reduce the glucose accumulation uh, uh, in the circulation. Uh, so that's all fit together is like a OGT is required for glucagon action on autophagy. Uh, so what's the cellular maximum? What's the signal? What's up and down of OGT in autophagy pathway? So to answer this question, uh, uh, so the how OGT glucagon induce uh, regular OGT activity, and so the the clue we got from, we actually look at the calcium signaling because there, uh, there was a one paper it's a, uh, by Eric Tavis group and uh, uh, shows, uh, in some hand they show actually glucagon can trigger uh, induced glucagon genesis that's been known. What they found is that the glucagon induced glucagon genesis through this uh, uh, IP3 set mediated the calcium flux activation of calcium technology in kinase too. And uh, so we, we, saw, we saw whether this, uh, uh, OGT can fit into this path response to glucagon. And so what we found out, uh, if you, uh, yes, if you delete OG uh, IP3 receptor, IP3 receptor uh, in the primary hypothesis, you can see this, uh, this loss of glucagon responsiveness. And uh, there's a, uh, uh, there was a, a need to reduce the glucose production from the liver and the uh, accumulation of glucose uh, in the circulation. And uh, uh, you, if, you knock down, if you knock out the actual receptor, uh, you can see that it's reduced to the phosphorylation of, a, of a, a, a calcium chromatin kinase that has been established. And uh, you can see here it's a, uh, really striking that it was a, 
reduce translation OGT as a student's 20 site, uh, so, uh, so that, uh, that and reduce uh, LC3 uh, to accumulation, reduce autopsy flux. So that's what the correlation is. Uh, because this will uh, tell you both uh, CAMK2 phosphorylation and the OGT phosphorylation uh, is a downstream of uh, uh, calcium signaling. Uh, so we ask the question is uh, whether the CAMK2 is a, uh, you know, uh, is a candidate that can phosphorylate OGT. Uh, so we did a in vitro uh, candidate assay. We did establish that uh, the purified uh, CAMK2 can phosphorylate OGT. And if you mutate that serum 20 side, you actually couldn't do it. So that suggests in the, in the purified system, like uh, uh, OGT, the direct subject of uh, CAMK2 on the phosphorylation side is S20. Uh, you can further we can see that uh, upon uh, amino acid starvation, you actually increase the, uh, this uh, S20 OGT phosphorylation. Uh, that's tell you this, uh, this, this phosphorylation that said respond to hunger signal. And, uh, uh, and this, uh, then that this also depend on their, uh, uh, the MIC induced uh, uh, OG phosphorylation also depend on this S20 side. And uh, furthermore, you can see that what the OGT can induce autophagy uh, uh, also depend on S20 side. And if you mutate this side, you can, uh, the punctal formation indicate autophagy, uh, autophagal formation was also uh, uh, compromised. Uh, so then what's the downstream OGT uh, in this pathway? Uh, 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 so we further confirm that by this uh, uh, gain function analysis, we overexpress CAMK2, uh, continue active from CAMK2. Uh, you can see that not only increase the uh, S20 phosphorylation, and increase the autophagy flux. Uh, you can see that the uh, gain function analysis show that uh, CAMK2, uh, uh, continue active CAMK2 can increase the, uh, can really potentially the glucose mediate the, uh, the glucose production uh, from the liver. Uh, so that's what the uh, outfit together the chemical tool can promote the OGT activity and the autophagy in the liver. So what's the downstream of uh, the target of the OGT in the autophagy pathway? So we, uh, we found out that your K1 is direct target of this uh, uh, OGT. Uh, you can see uh, if uh, always that OGT, you can see increased ULK and phosphorylation and uh, glycosylation. And this is also dependent on this uh, S20 phosphorylation set of OGT. Uh, and, and then, so we further map out the glycosylation site uh, on the ULK1. Uh, this, uh, uh, this, this town is a true set. This was uh, 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 six, uh, uh, this was a uh, 635 and a seven, uh, uh, 758 site. So uh, if uh, you mutate this uh, both sides, you can see what uh, this, uh, 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 this guy from the side, uh, 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 this guy from the side. Uh, so you can uh, see that was a ULK1 phosphorylation was, uh, uh, was compromised. So this uh, uh, so that's uh, this been, uh, I should mention this, uh, this ULK phosphorylation on the EM, EM, EMPK dependent phosphorylation side. So that tell you glycosylation on ULK, that would uh, promote phosphorylation AMPK on different side. This is one example to tell you the positive crosstalk between glycosylation and phosphorylation. Glycosylation, uh, uh, glycosylation can increase phosphorylation by specific candidate by AMPK on this ULK uh, protein. And uh, not only that, we look at the ULK1 downstream uh, subject like uh, the backlink, backlink mean known, ULK kinase subject. Uh, you can see that was uh, uh, the the wild type ULK can uh, uh, phosphorylate backlink uh, effectively. If you mutate this uh, two guys who said, not only decrease the MPK phosphorylation and decrease the ULK activity. Uh, so this uh, so far we map out uh, this uh, uh, pretty unknown the pathway by which glucagon signal can uh, trigger initiation of autophagy. What we show here was uh, upon the fasting signal that the glucagon can trigger the PS3 kinase uh, pathway that uh, 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 trigger the uh, F3 uh, receptor-mediated calcium flux 
activation of uh, uh, and the uh, uh, calcium, calcium commanding kind of MK2, and that this uh, little phosphorylation of OGT at 20 set, and this phosphorylation promotes this uh, ULK, uh, 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 the little ULK glycosylation, and uh, uh, and uh, that uh, glycosylation promotes ULK phosphorylation and activation of top D pathway. Uh, so, so that was uh, uh, this is uh, we kind of uh, kind of answer the the ancient question is uh, how like glucagon glucagon injection in the liver can induce autophagy is uh, uh, through this uh, this this uh, molecular uh, the mechanism and uh, as a result if glucagon can trigger that uh, autophagy this will provide substrate for glucose production in the liver and uh, uh, and uh, the ketomatic uh, formation uh, to be used for the metabolic fuel upon uh, uh, starvation. Uh, and uh, this story has been uh, 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 kind of uh, you really uh, give you additional insight of uh, OGT is a versatile protein to do all the job to maintain the uh, glucose homeostasis in the liver response feeding fasting signal. Uh, so the acute effect of OGT is to migrate to the plus membrane upon feeding, upon insulin stimulation, try to terminate insulin signaling. However, uh, the prolonged phosphorylation, uh, pro prolonged uh, the fasting, the, the OGT will move to the nuclear to promote gluconeogenesis by uh, by the target PG3 and phospho complex. That was the lead to glucose production in the liver. However, to to produce glucose in liver, you need a building block. So what they uh, they uh, so you also OGT also can through this uh, calcium uh, calcium kinase. Uh, to uh, to mediate the ULK, uh, tri initiate the uh, autophagy uh, uh, processes. That was a little degradation of the intracellular compartment of the liver that provides substrate for the uh, uh, for the uh, uh, for the gluconeogenesis. So that OGT really uh, the role is really uh, uh, critical in at multiple layer uh, uh, in that sense. Uh, so in the last 10 minutes, I'm going to tell the story. It's uh, not uh, really the liver. It's uh, how brain communicates with the uh, edible tissue, uh, uh, which we know like was uh, uh, this uh, uh, in hypothalamus so there was uh, is a critical center to respond to feeding fasting signal, uh, feeding fasting uh, to regulate uh, the energy homeostasis. And the HRP, the hunger neuron, that is induced by the ghrelin. Uh, uh, that was the hunger signal uh, secreted from the, the gut. Uh, so that was uh, during, the uh, uh, during, uh, during the hunger, there was a uh, uh, AGRP uh, neuron activation can, can surprise uh, the uh, any expenditure, the increased food intake to, to try to maintain the energy balance. And during the feeding, you actually, there's a, the other neuron called pump C neuron uh, is critical uh, that the that the was satiety neuron can be induced by the feeding, and then then activation pump in neuron way to uh, as a, to actually suppress the input intake, and then increase energy and in, in energy expenditure to maintain the energy balance. So that's what the, the this two neuron population in the yin and the yang to control the feeding fasting process to maintain the energy homeostasis. Uh, and so we. Uh, we, we ask the question is, uh, as a nutrient sensor, what's the OGT role as a nutrient sensor in the, in the central nervous system? Uh, so, uh, so uh, interesting in AGF neuron, is interesting the overall modification was induced by fasting, by fasting. So that was, uh, 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 and also it's, uh, people always say nutrient ability control over the level. But this is uh, in the uh, AGF neuron, it uh, gives a, uh, uh, Google, uh, uh, the, the ghrelin uh, injection uh, uh, in, in the brain, you actually can increase the organic level uh, 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 in the HRP neuron. So that will tell you, like uh, this, uh, as we see in HRP neuron, it's uh, organic signaling, not respond to, uh, it's not respond to nutrient molecules, it's respond to the directly respond, uh, response to the, the hormonal thing, hormonal cue, in this case, is the ghrelin. Uh, 
So what's the role of the player how to respond to the f uh, fasting and the grinding? What's the role of player uh, of uh, uh, OGT in the AGF neuron? So we did the electrophysiology. There was a, uh, there the member potential, there is no difference uh, if you delete OGT in JAP neuron. And that tells the cells still intact, cell down and die, still intact. However, this, uh, the spontaneous firing rate will reduce. So that will just kind of bear up uh, uh, effective. So that's one, that, that explains that what the AGF uh, deletion OGT in JAP neuron, they, they have, imp uh, have impaired the neuronal excitability. And, and then, uh, so what uh, uh, we look at the, the what uh, the metabolic phenotype we delete OGT in the Japanese neuron. Uh, so we look at the many different tissue like uh, like uh, uh, the white fat, brown fat, the beige fat, and uh, uh, are the uh, muscle and the liver. Uh, so it's really like the, uh, that the deletion OGT in Japanese neuron really can modulate uh, their the, the, the have the remodeling of the edible tissue in different way. Uh, as you know, like with the, uh, the white fat is a fat store the triglyceride, and the brown fat is, a, uh, it is a, the somogenic fat that would burn the edible, burn the fat. And, and we, as we also recently we know that uh, the beige, beige cell is a, uh, is a, like a, brown like fat, uh, brown like fat cell derived from the white fat. As, and then this was a, we know like a, a many physiological cue like a cold and a drug like a FGI21, like a, uh, uh, and the catecholamine, they call it all is due to browning of white fat and the formation of beige fat. Uh, so that was a, uh, uh, this currently like was a, uh, uh, the, the, Intensive area of research in the edible tissue biology, and interestingly, we uh, we look at this uh, the, the gene expression profile uh, in the different fat pad. Lost OGT in Japan neuron, you can see it doesn't affect the brown uh, 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 brown edible tissue uh, somogenic uh, program as indicated using pure expression as at expression. Uh, however. Uh, in the uh, white fat, was uh, particularly in the retroperitoneal white fat, that's a fat pad on the kidney area. That's a the quicker induction of uh, UCP expression, SLA expression. Uh, uh, that's what the marker of running white fat. So that's what the parallel loss OGT can really can trigger the browning of white fat. And that's what the, uh, also uh, does increase the, the, the uh, energy expenditure, which it uh, didn't show. Uh, however, as a result, with uh, this uh, loss of OGT in the neuron can uh, not only increase the browning white fat, increase the energy, uh, uh, energy uh, 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 promote the energy uh, 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 expenditure, and the result is was uh, the mice will be really resistant to the high fat diet induced the obesity, and uh, 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 further you can show that was uh, the browning of white fat also. In this uh, uh, a Japanese OGT knockout mice has shown that reduced the overall uh, long term uh, is really uh, reduced the, not only the browning white fat and uh, reduced the the, uh, the the fat pad mass uh, in the, including sub Q fat, uh, 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 inguinal fat, and retroperitoneal fat, and uh, so. But uh, there's no change in the uh, uh, gonadal fat. That tells you that it was uh, the OGT. Uh, control the browning of white fat is a, is a depot specific. Um, uh, so uh, that was a, uh, so why this matter? Uh, so what, what really this animal model can tell us about the physiology and the passive physiology? And so what do we think was uh, really use this AGRP uh, OGT knockout mice uh, in the uh, central nervous system, like uh, the HIV neuron, we identify uh, the the mechanism uh, by which this uh, neuron can control the the conversion between white fat and the brown fat, and good fat and bad fat, in certain sense. Uh, so, uh, as we know, that like, uh, was uh, this uh, and the organ modification in the HIV neuron is respond is the mediate of the fasting signal. That was uh, uh, so upon the fasting, 
the o, uh, this uh, OI modification can uh, uh, is, uh, uh, lead to neur neuronal excitability. And uh, uh, the, the activation of this neuron uh, we uh, uh, suppress this, uh, 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 this uh, uh, SNS flow, uh, this uh, sympathetic neural system, the outflow, that would uh, uh, suppress the browning of white fat. And so, so why do you want hunger? You need to suppress browning white fat. That was really an ancient mechanism for the, uh, uh, for the survival because they're, uh, because uh, when we, you know, ancestor, they often experience uh, starvation. They don't have the food as easily available as we, we have now. And uh, so, so you really, there, uh, when you have the very limited uh, the nutrient available, you really don't want to, all the nutrient to be used for the heat production. You want to use the conserve this uh, uh, energy to be used for more essential function because a lot of you need a brain activity that's consuming a lot of heart beating. That essential function is uh, very critical. So that's probably the ancient survival, uh, the evolution conserved mechanism for the survival is uh, during the starvation, you actually suppress the browning white fat, so probably the heat production in your body to conserve energy, to, to uh, reallocate energy to be used for the other more, more critical the, the basal metabolism are the other critical function. And uh, however, in modern society, there was a, this, uh, big, uh, this, uh, this process was really, you really don't need uh, this uh, survival maximum. As a result, this, uh, uh, this process was compromised in modern society because of overnutrition. And then you cannot, you, you actually, rather than overactivation this pathway, lead to that was a, uh, uh, there, uh, that, that was uh, uh, that that lead, lead to the uh, you don't you don't experience the starvation, and uh, so that lead to hyperactivation this pathway that lead to that uh, that lead to suppressing of the browning and uh, uh, and, and uh, increase the energy storage. So that was uh, uh, probably critical uh, the mediator of the contributor to uh, the of, uh, 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 obesity. Uh, the, Epidemics. Uh, so that was uh, uh, through that look at this modification. I can uh, not only you can appreciate that so the OGT uh, in the different cell type is really uh, is a versatile uh, nutrient sensor and the hormonal sensor, and this modification can facilitate insulin signaling termination during feeding, and this modification can promote autophagy and glucogenesis during the fasting, and and uh, also, I, I, I just uh, tell you that uh, this old modification in the central nervous system can enable HF neuron to supply the whitening of uh, uh, the browning of white fat to conserve energy during the fasting. So, so that was uh, just uh, uh, the work we published. Uh, hopefully, get uh, the sense of uh, this old modification may play maybe part of this uh, uh, PTM code, the protein uh, trans uh, post transmitted modification code that can e really integrate uh, the internal external cues to dictate uh, many different uh, biological processes uh, to maintain the metabolic homeostasis. Uh, so whether this pathway can be targeted, can uh, druggable, so that's something we don't have an answer, but uh, I can give you a clue about that because there, uh, uh, so, so what we think that what I have to just mention that uh, this, uh, this OGT trigger liver autophagy and uh, pre lead to breakdown of uh, uh, the, uh, the cellular compartment and uh, lead to, and also that promote uh, gluconeogenesis that, uh, that, uh, 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 through by convert like, uh, uh, the glycerol and the amylase to the glucose, including gluconeogenesis uh, in the fasted uh, liver. And so whether we can just uh, suppress this uh, uh, by targeted OGT, inhibit OGT activity, you can suppress the autophagy, suppress the glucogenesis. That can be the one way you really can uh, ameliorate the, the type two diabetes. So that's one thing where uh, that's potential the, the, the strategy. On the other hand, we know like uh, during the fasting, the the ghrelin can uh, active HF neuron can suppress the browning of white fat 
and uh, th that will lead to in uh, uh, reduce the energy expenditure, uh, increase the energy storage. So whether we can uh, target uh, this OGT in the brain, that was a, that uh, released the pricing of Brownian, increase the thermogenic program, and uh, increase energy expenditure. So in that way, whether target OGT is a strategy to treat both diabetes and obesity, that's a future research. We are, we are the big, one of the major questions we are asking. Uh, so uh, this is uh, the current people in my lab, and uh, the st actually three story I share with you today was all done by this postdoc fellow. He's not current assistant professor at the University of Minnesota, uh, having run. And hopefully I have a chance to talk about the other people who work in the future. Uh, all of our collaborators at Yale, uh, uh, and that, uh, 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 that was uh, the Barbara Ehrlich and then McLean helped with the liver story, and Tomasz uh, Horace is our chair, uh, is uh, help with uh, this AGRP neuron con regulation of brown and white fat, and uh, Barbara Sherman, the Jerry Schulman, really helped with a lot of metabolic analysis and uh, also collaborate in the uh, other part of the world. Okay, I'll, I'll stop and uh, be happy to answer questions.